look at that. Yay. Uh, we are live. And now I'm going to click on here. <laughs> we are live. I think it has to, I think it has to connect. Oh, it's connecting. Something's <sighs> happening. I think we're, okay. We're about to go live on Instagram. So buckle up everybody. <laughs> yep. Whee. Well, hello everybody to uh, a very special episode of Double Defense. We it's think we're live on Instagram. Here, apparently, <laughs> we think we think we're accomplishing this. Um, hopefully, somebody will comment and let us know if we're actually doing this. Uh, we are so excited today because we have a very special guest, and that is Colin. Colin is an extremely talented hockey artist, and I want him to talk a little bit more about what it means to be a hockey artist. But also, almost more importantly, right now. He is an Edmonton Oilers fan. So we have one yeah. live in the flesh to describe cool. what it's like to be losing to the Florida Panthers, something that Christine and I are experts at. Dun, yeah. Dun, dun. <laughs> yeah. Well, welcome, Liz, Colin. Welcome, Liz, Liz, Christine. Thank you for it's a pleasure to be here. I am very excited and stressed at the same time. But uh, yeah, thanks for having me on. It's, it's uh, super awesome to be on. Isn't that fun? Well, okay. I want to I want to kick off just by asking, how are you doing? How are you uh, feeling, Colin? <laughs> we're we're feeling a lot of emotions right now, Liz. I mean, obviously, there's this, uh, there's this sort of this balance of, we finally made it in the Connor McDavid era. It's been nine years of having the greatest player in the universe, not getting <laughs> to the show. Finally in the show, and now we're there. And after two games, we're like, where is the goals <laughs> that oh, they yeah, score? Yeah, that they tend to score a lot of, and they're not there. And why is dry settle trying to break people's faces and like <laughs> that was, going through defense's legs game. and stuff. So it's sort of a, like all like that. So I'm not even in Edmonton right now. I'm in Calgary. I'm in enemy territory, but the conversations <laughs> I've been having today, like running into other Oilers fans is like, we, we got to win. Like we like, it's sort of, it's kind of game seven tomorrow for, for Edmonton and for, for the Oilers fans. Cause I well, think it, it's, it's, you go down three, home. nothing. You ain't, you ain't getting game climbing out of that. Well, you know, your odds are, are stacked against you. I mean, I, you know, yes. they, the headlines today are, you know, that they're prepping up to become one of only six teams <laughs> to to come back from a 2-0 deficit to win. So, yeah, and they are at home. Uh, how do you think they're going to do tomorrow? I think I think they're going to come out like... I think the crowd's going to jack them up. I think, I think, uh, I think the the fans who will be paying a hefty price yeah, to be in that arena. With, about the are, weather, are going to yeah. all lose lose their minds. I want to ask, what is wow. a, I don't want to interrupt, but what is a hefty price? What are the what are the seats going for? In I've heard I've heard stories of like fifteen hundred bucks for wow, for like and like the all the seats in Rogers Place are actually pretty decent. Like, there's not a bad seat. It's a brand new arena. It's it's there's not a bad seat in the house, but it's we're we're talking like yeah, this these are paychecks for a lot of people right like this is so yeah but they'll be and it's worth it yeah there you go right uh it's but they'll be like they'll, there'll be the, the the party in the ice district like they're having bands come and play like um oh, i think our yeah. lady peace is playing shania twain is like playing for game four so i think like yeah. so there's gonna be i think a bit of an atmosphere outside but um yeah, i think they're, i think they're gonna throw throw everything at the wall and just see what happens but what well, hopefully it's more than 10 things at the wall, like shots. Yeah, yes, you know? yeah. Uh, like that. Okay. You know. would, yeah, like, it's great you score the first goal on your first shot, but can we not do that before, like, the nine-minute mark I know. of the first period? If they're, like, if they're, they're thinking they're so good, they only need 10 shots on goal to win, like, no. like, like you know, against Dallas and the Kings. That's yeah. obviously gone out the window. They've also been shutting down McDavid, right? So, yeah. So, uh, the Panthers are doing their job well, uh, you know, uh it it's it's been fun it's been fun to watch it's funny i was talking to liz about how you know everybody was saying no matter who won the east that they would easily take on the west but then the minute that we lost everyone was like well the oilers will win so so they all jumped over you know oh, did and they really so, yeah i don't know i don't know about that i don't i think people thing. wanted the oilers to win and by people i mean me they just didn't want the <laughs> yeah most people were angry with the panthers so um you know look what was it 1990 are we talking the last time the oilers won 
Yes, that was yeah. so Gretzky wasn't there. That was the Messier led team. I think Messier did something not that long after that, and then he won another cup somewhere else. I, 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 know. Know. I, I recall can't something. quite think of the team. I can't remember what it was. That sounds from, that sounds uh, from which familiar. was also hey, there. You go right. <laughs> I, uh, I love a surf I haven't put away yet. Also, <laughs> I let let's you know. Also, like the Rangers stopped the cups coming to Canada. I might add because that was Montreal won, then the Rangers won, and it's been. Since Part then. of the other reason that I'm pulling, uh, among many reasons that I am rooting for the Oilers in this, um, you guys deserve a cup. It is your national sport and not ours. So I feel yeah. like that's very well deserved. I like the Oilers. I have a whole, and I've, tell, I've been telling this to Christine for a very long time. <laughs> I have an entire conspiracy theory about how the Rangers and the Oilers are actually the same team and they're secretly being run behind the scenes by oh. like the higher ups of hockey that we Go don't on. even know about. Yes. I'm going to do a whole episode on this. Okay, There's okay. weird parallels between the Rangers and the Oilers. And I feel like the, the Oilers are sort of West Coast Rangers. And mm -hmm. I actually feel like a lot of play, and, and we talked about this in the last, in the, in the Western finals and the Eastern finals, how similar like the styles of play were. And I feel yeah. like the Oilers were sort of the Rangers with better puck luck. So I feel yeah. like you guys are, are taking the torch and I was really hoping, I was hoping that you guys would beat the Panthers, but you know, just watching how this is all playing out. I, I just don't know if they're a really beatable team, to be honest. Uh, I think, I think the next. They've never won. So, you know, at this point I go for more the underdog. <laughs> so, so sorry, Colin, I'm kind of not rooting for the Oilers. Um, okay. I'm not a real big McDavid fan, and, oh, and I've talked about this. Why? Too. Tell what? Uh, what? Why not? What's uh, What's missing? Well, my thing is, uh, you know, and I've, and again, I've talked about this too. You know, are players good because they've they're given the ice time and the opportunities to get the points and the goals, mm -hmm. um, or are they given the ice time because they're good? It's mm -hmm. it's a combination of both. But when you see certain people on certain teams wow. given certain opportunities you know then you know it takes away you know it, it takes away the the, the glory and, and the fun out of it for me you know so um you know could could mcdavid do what he does if he was given you know you know the 20 minute 24 minute ice time that that most other you know like you know first line gets uh they're playing you know he's playing literally half a game you know, yeah. dry cycles. So they just have so much more time in this. And here's another thing I was thinking about, because I have a degree in math. Why aren't like, why can't they, they do a mathematical formula to equate that? Yeah. You know, if he's out on the, on the ice 30, you know, 30 minutes a game, he's going to have more points. He's going to have more shots. He's going to have better stats. But if they actually were to equalize out the stats against, um, you know, each of the players based on the time they're at, we may have a different story. So, um, so it's an interesting thing and that's just my take on it. So, I mean, it's not to say he's not good. Um, it's, you know, it's just, ha you know, one of the things they were saying is like, they're really not doing much. Uh, and this could be why that they're not producing well, uh, against the Panthers, uh, because the Panthers have been really good at marking him in, in dry yeah. style. And then all the other games they were saying, look, they're not even scoring unless those two are on the ice. So you shut those two down. What do you have? That's, you that's been, team. that's been the scuttlebutt on the Oilers. This entire, the entire Connell McDavid era has been, well, if you yeah. take, if you shut down McDavid and dry settle, the Oilers don't score. And yeah. up and like, and, and what's frustrating about this playoff run is that it's sort of depending on the game, the headline is whether, hey, hooray for the Oilers' depth because, uh, you know, Nugent Hopkins scored or, you know, you had uh, Henrique scored. <laughs> and then you'll have the games where they don't do anything that's like, where's the Oilers' depth? Like, where, you know, yeah. maybe we can't do it all, right? So. But does uh, this not sound familiar as a Rangers fan? It totally oh, does. Yes, yeah. Also, yeah. and how and how are you? Yeah, but our depth was not really there during the during the the round against. Well, Florida. what wasn't there was the expectations of what our first line should be doing, and that you know, and they weren't able to do it. We did have everybody else, you know, kind of. Yeah, stuff. that is true. Um, that is true. But um, okay, I, I have another question though. So you've um, you guys took our coach. Our, our potential coach from the Wolfpack, Chris Knobloch. Yeah. How are you feeling? What's the vibe about Chris uh, in Edmonton right now? 
I think I, I think Chris is getting a free pass just because of where the team was versus to where he is now. And it's sort of like I don't I haven't get, gotten a sense of like no one saying, oh, like, you know, how people turn on their coach because they do a thing. Uh, no, no one's done, done that yet. 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 Everyone's just kind of done that. And I think that I think part of it is like his demeanor where it's like every time they show him on TV, he's just. Oh, no. Wait, wait. Let's, let's, he, I'm like, is he is he concerned? Is he confused? Yeah, is right? he looking intent? He's is just he kind of has, us? Yeah, it's kind of off putting where he's not like, you know, he's not like those coaches that's like throwing chairs and stuff, like Mike Keating style under the ice. He's just kind of just, you know, that's first, so funny. I was first, just first shot goal this. against. He's just. <laughs> it has that little wrinkle, that little crease. Yeah, and then that's just it. kind of, he just, just kind of like a little. Him. His brow moves down a little bit. Do you but think no, he's, he's like he's like he's a deer in headlights? Pass, 100%. Yeah, like, well, because they they interviewed him for the last round when it went to Game Seven. He's like, I've never coached a Game Seven before. Like, I don't Maybe. know what's going to happen. So I feel like he's just like. Like holy shit, I'm just here. Like this yeah. is amazing. I know. He's kind of, yeah, maybe he's just like, man, they hired me when this team was garbage, and the only place they could go was up. And now so they're in the finals. I'm just gonna, which is yeah. Maybe he's just gonna been. come out and be like, I don't know. I just put 97 and 29 out there, and they do <laughs> things, and, there. I and then just destroys there. coaching forever as like a skilled, <laughs> skilled job. <laughs> Even so, the last game was there, everything was going on. There was elbows. There was hits. Yeah. There was fights. There was punches. There was shoves. There was clothes lining. I mean, they were doing everything, and yet every time they put it on him, his face was the same. <laughs> yeah, just. <laughs> Like, oh, no. Yeah, yeah, I don't want to see them getting dirty, you know, and that was still a little disappointing, too. It and got a little bit. It got a little yeah. bit dirty for sure in this last no, game. Pe- no, like, no further penalties or anything on that big hit is what they're saying, which, you know. So, you know, so it is. It's playoff hockey. It's do or die. People are going to just throw, you know, throw hammers, throw punches, do whatever they can do to get away with it because it's all about getting the cup, you know? Yeah. And so tell me about, do you know any story? I know they've been interviewing her, but every time they show that crowd, there's that lady, that silver lady, you know, in oh, the crowd. Oh, I thought you were going to, I thought you were going to talk about the other lady. Well, there's her too, but I just saw a story where she deleted her whole social media for for anything. No, but oh, there's I'm that. Not, like, I'm not. I'm not. I'm no, I don't know this other story. So I, I think I've seen the silver lady a couple times though. Oh, Sorry. let me tell you. Uh, let me tell you about the the other one. Um, okay. Because I, I just had this conversation with another friend who is an Oilers fan who also didn't know what I was talking about, and then I explained it. So in the last round. Uh, like I guess it was the last game. This woman, like at, in Edmonton, decided mm-hmm. she was gonna flash the crowd. <laughs> so oh. she pulled up her shirt and flashed everybody. I mean, mm-hmm. good for her. They were lovely. It was, it was, they yeah. were very it was. lovely. But she <laughs> yeah. she's like created memes now. So there's oh. all these memes that now Ooh. reference this woman. Um, so I feel like oh, I feel I like the Edmonton, like the Edmonton fans are passionate. And then the woman that Christina is talking about is the woman who's like head to toe, like in think, silver. No. Yeah, I think I've seen her. Like she was, I think I think they've had her on camera in the games. And I think sometimes, like think, I'm not sure if she's in the games anymore, but she's sometimes out in like the the like the party outside in the ice. The, no, ice no, she's right in the front, and I've seen yeah. her at the games, like behind the glass. Yeah, so. yeah. And then on the other girl, I was reading today, like all the all the Panther fans were like, Panther ladies, come on, where's your support? And apparently there is a video of a Panther fan just with her boobs against the glass. And they're oh, really? uh, just as spectacular. So that's good for it. you, that's, ladies. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you got I, remember, I remember like so back when back when the Flames had their run against Tampa, and I think the last time the Oilers did this, I I get the sense that that happened a lot more but that was before the age we live in now or oh yeah like it's you know it's different like it goes to twitter and it kind of disappears but now it's like yeah it's just going to be you can repurpose reels and you can repurpose all this stuff so yeah yeah right or just before they were so ingrained (laughs) but yeah well okay so speaking of that i want to take this opportunity to ask colin as a hockey artist i would love for you to share a little bit more about what got you into it? What does it mean to be a hockey artist? Because I, I, you have done our logo, which yes. we absolutely and I've known adore. For years, it feels like. A yeah. Of years. So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So I mean, I've so I've always been a cartoonist. So I've I've been drawing since I was like, like I think three years old. Uh, just drawing and just drawing, just like 
when I was growing up, I, I drew like Ninja Turtles and Ghostbusters and, and X-Men and that sort of stuff. Uh, and it was sort of in the, I, I say last couple of years, but it was more like, yeah, like 10 or 15 years, kind of with the rise of um, uh, of Instagram. There was a, there was a one point, actually, I was, uh, my, my crowning, my crowning claim to fame was I was the cartoonist for my small town newspaper. So every week I would drop off a cartoon, they would publish it in the newspaper, I'd be paid $5. And <laughs> Like I would go to the grocery, but I grew up in a town, it's Saskatchewan town of 2000 people. So like people would say, Hey, I read your cartoon this week. It was funny or your cartoon wasn't funny. What are you doing? Sort of thing. Um, so then as, uh, as you know, Instagram comes out, uh, kind of get back more into it. And then it was kind of like, you know, I like, I, I like hockey. I've always been a hockey fan. Uh, used to have a poster of the Stanley cup in my bedroom. Uh, and then it's like, yeah, like, but I want to draw like, you know, draw, you know, instead of drawing like superhero ladies, draw, hockey pinups draw hockey ladies that sort of thing so uh i think uh, christine was kind of one of my one of one of my one of my earlier customers did a commission for her but then i also found that like rangers fans i did more artwork for rangers fans than any other fan base like combined almost which blew my mind like it was interesting it, you know, yeah it would do lots of rangers artwork but i you know i try hey i'll post like a, a maple leafs one or something see if that gets some commissions when i did a lot of commissions and nothing so yeah so thank you to rangers fans but yeah but i guess it's sort of just yeah trying to pair a love of i like to draw i like you know i always like hockey and i think instagram has exposed me to this sort of this this whole nation of uh female hockey fans which you know growing up i didn't see a lot of and i think it's awesome and it's great so yeah so it's just sort of like pairing all these different things and now you can draw right on ipads now and color and do and cheat I don't have to like use markers or anything. So yeah, so it's been a lot of fun. Do you have any favorite projects that you've worked on? I mean, yours was, my favorite. Than yours was, my, your <laughs> logo was my favorite project. What are you talking about? Yeah. Like I think when you guys reached out, it was like, Hey, we need a new logo for our podcast. Uh, it's, you know, I'm like, this is awesome. I get to do uh, something for you guys, which is awesome. I get to do a logo, which I used to do. I used to be a graphic designer. So I got to do a logo again. And yeah, I think that was like, I think the, the, the peak of sort of like, yeah, do a logo for a hockey podcast. I'm like, absolutely. Uh, for those listening, you know, and also, you know, to, 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 to say one of the things I've loved, cause I've also commissioned you like for another, I don't know if you remember this, like, so there was a group of friends of mine that, um, you know, they were like three geeks and, and so yeah. they each had like, they, they were, they had shirts and their own little superheroes and their characters. And, it was the best thing because you the one thing you're able to do when you do draw these is capture the personality. You know, you go, go in depth, you ask people the questions. And with that one especially, you know, I did it as a surprise and you capture each of their personalities without knowing them just from what I could give you yeah. so well that they just they absolutely loved it. And the same thing with, you know, with the one I've done before and with our logo with the three of us. Um you, you know, just a few, you, you ask the questions, you get the personality and you're, you know, and, and if, and we're not afraid to say, well, that's not really, a, and then you correct it to capture yeah. it so when you're putting it out there. And that's what I like looking at you, not, they're not the same. And cause you're getting that personality of that person in there and yeah. you can sense that about them. And, uh, and that's, and that's what makes it really, really good. When we were looking at doing it like an, uh, you know, this, this little photo or in trying to commission someone to do it. We had another site where we were, we got a couple things back. <laughs> we're nowhere near <laughs> yeah. Yeah. what you just did. You're like, here, and then you get, we're like, that's it right there. You know? Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, uh, I appreciate that. Thank you. <laughs> it was great. It's it was a really, it was a really fun experience. And I feel like we learned a little bit about ourselves in the process too, which was really fun. <laughs> Yeah. Well, then, and the, and the one thing is you mentioned like trying to capture the personality because I don't draw, uh, like I don't draw a very hyper realistic style. Like I try it for you guys. I, I, I the last couple of years I, I've started to cheat where actually I'll take up like someone's photo and then I'll trace it as a way to sort of like, okay, can I make this kind of look more like the person? Because the last thing you want when you're trying to do like a portrait, especially for someone like me, who's, I don't consider myself a portrait artist. I'm, I'm just a hack with a pencil essentially. <laughs> But it's like, how do I try to capture at least a little bit of their personality and their energy? Because otherwise, it's just going to be two eyes and nose and a mouth. And it's going to be like, well, here you go. And, and the word, the last thing you want to hear, and it's happened on occasion, someone's like, well, that doesn't look anything like me. 
Like yeah. I actually, I did, I did a project once for a friend of mine uh, to do. It was like, it was, it was, it was a, a kind of a, like a drawing like yours, Christine, like for your friends, but it was her and her fiance. And I did a drawing for them. It was kind of part of their wedding invitation. And it was my style. And it's something where like, okay, you've seen my style. You kind of know what we do. I gave it to her. And this was kind of early on. And she's like, okay, this doesn't look anything like us though. And it was like, okay, well, I get that, but also I'm not that type of artist. So right. I think that experience kind of taught me like when we do, when you do, especially when we're doing your logo, we we'll always want to make sure that we are, we're aligned with how, how does this look? How are things going? Do we need to make any changes? And you guys are really good giving that feedback saying, you know what? We don't want this to be as realistic as my initial draft. We actually want it to be a little more cartoony, a little more energetic. So uh, which was great. So I mean, yeah. So I thought it was an awesome project. It's the the highlight I think for for uh, for doing hockey chart cartoons. And uh, yeah, it was super awesome. It's fun, and there's motion in 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 the pictures too. So in the other one, you know, uh, we you know, it again, it's like there's depth to these ones as well. So yeah, do that, and and you do them pretty quickly. So from from small sketches that I've seen you do, and as a drawing, which we'll want to, you know, we'll. We're going to continue to kind of work with you and sponsor some of these kind of opportunities for people, which I think is a really good idea because it's yeah. super fun, you know, to do. And not only that, but I love it when you um, you put it out and, and people check out Colin's site. It's really fun with all the pictures because you also have the, you know, the kind of the video that kind of shows what you've done from, you know, start yeah. to finish, you know, little snippets of it to kind of add to that dimension of creation for what you're doing and yeah. it makes it super fun it just you know it hasn't got old everything that you put out that we see you know it's just so enjoyable and i i absolutely loved you know the last one which i shared you know on a story for those listening um last week when you put it out where you know it was it was the panthers and the oilers you know yeah Get those rivalries going. <laughs> yeah, I call, I call, I call, I call it. I think it was like, yeah, raged manga hockey girls. I think was what I called it. Just instead of hockey pinups, because I wanted, I wanted something to kind of capture. Like, like pinups are fine, but they're very static, right? It's all, it's still, it's always the hand on the hip, and that was like early on. I did a lot of that, and but for this, oh, I really want, and kind of going forward, it's like, no, I want to capture like movement and energy, and just like the sheer stress and anxiety of being a Rangers fan in the garden or like being like, yeah, watching the Stanley cup finals for a team that's not been there in 18 years. So, uh, or even the Panthers were just yeah. like, Hey, we lost last year. This is a chance to kind of right some wrongs. So. And, and if, if nothing, I mean, hockey is emotional and I think we've all learned yeah. that in a huge way over the last year. Yeah. So I have a question. So I have a question. I have a hockey theory. I want to tell you, I want to get your opinion on this. Do you think, so if you took all the sports, and you put like the best game of every sport, like the most exciting baseball game, stack it against the most exciting football game and the most exciting hockey game. Do you not think is hockey the, the most exciting? If you took like the best hockey game and stack them, would you think it would beat those other ones? Uh, I'm just going to jump in here by far. Yes. I, okay. Like, when we're probably most, biased, but the most exciting baseball game you could ever watch is still going to be the most boring game you could possibly imagine, just because of the nature of how it is. Yeah. Basketball is problematic because there's too much scoring. It's like too yeah. much. Scoring. If you score in every single back and forth, there's no interest. And yeah. football, they stop all the time. You, yes. You're not playing. You're stopping. So yeah. I think by nature of that, I think the most boring hockey game against the most exciting baseball game still oh. might go to hockey. Oh, okay. You then you 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 are super super <laughs> hardcore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah well, well, then you got to talk other really sports good. that are really comparable, more comparable, which would be soccer, rugby. Yeah. Uh, I was watching Australian football the other day, and I was watching that. But <laughs> I, was like, I was watching that the other day. So compare those; it's more comparable. Um, yeah. Because those are, well, if you understand it, you know, it's. Yeah, but, but then, but, but think like, and we've watched, I've, I've dragged Christine to some rugby games and we've seen, <laughs> we've watched some rugby and rugby is extremely fun to watch. Yeah. However, hockey is rugby, but they're on shoes made of knives. Yes. <laughs> so how could that be less exciting? There's no yeah. possible way. <laughs> <laughs> so it's comparable, but yes, American sports. Yeah. There's, I mean, every, every hockey game has an element of excitement to it. Mm -hmm. I, I don't, you know, as we've been doing this podcast and 
talking with friends of ours who haven't watched hockey, who are now watching it, they're kind of mm. you know drawn in into it, and they get it, you know, that they, they get a, that excitement level. So mm. you know, again, baseball doesn't get exciting unless it's a certain play. Football, you know, again, uh, you know, there's moments of excitement um, when when they're closer to scoring, you know, or, or there's a major takedown, but it's it's you know, it, it's, it, it's periodic. And then basketball is really only exciting in the last like two minutes if it's close. So. <laughs> which, yeah. which, which yeah. take 30 minutes too. Which yeah, exactly. So can, can, can I ask a question? And I don't mean to hijack your podcaster, but I'm, I'm Canadian. I'm super curious. So, uh, so you're, you're Rangers fans and you both live in California, correct? Now, so yeah. So what's your, so what's your, what's your pitch? How do you, you talk about like converting people and bringing people into, into, into well, our club, into our hockey club. No, what's, your, what's, your, what's your pitch? How do you get them to, so I'm like, I don't like hockey. How do you get them to come watch a game? All kinds of ways. First of all, California's got three hockey teams. Just that, from, that's true. Two in Southern California. So, mm -hmm. uh, so hockey fans are all over the place. And, you know, and you'd be surprised at where I find Ranger fans in the wild. I found one in Sault Ste. Marie, you know, in really? the bar, there in the Golden Bar. And I was like, what? I just want to say, God help anybody who runs into Christine, where, like, if, if they're wearing anything Rangers and, like, Christine's out of her element in some random place, yeah. there's no chance that she will not, like, run up oh, to them. Sure. We, we were in when we were we had our layover in Houston, and this poor guy walks into the airport lounge with a Ranger shirt on, and I thought she was gonna like knock him over. Like, uh -huh. <laughs> he didn't know what hit him. But that's why you wear that stuff, right? Like I've I've like there was a time where I wore like I wore a I used to I wore used to have like a Birmingham FC shirt. Like this was like twenty years ago. I bought it because I was watching soccer, and I would wear it out, and I would just get random people coming up, be like, oh my gosh. So like you wear that like you want for you wear those for especially in Houston you wear those for those interactions just in case yeah. you're in the corner oh, and it was my fun. favorite <laughs> my favorite one was was Liz and I walking through the airport in uh, in Houston and all I heard was Rangers <laughs> New York <laughs> Rangers and the guy kept walking by it was so funny plus the you know and then the the pilot when we were getting we were ready to board <laughs> the pilot walks by and I of course I'm. I, was I drinking by then? I probably wasn't, but um, uh, <laughs> but I was. We were just excited, and so as a pilot passes, I said, "Can I order up a winning flight?" And he thought he was going to be, you know, pretty quick. And he turns around, but you need a team to. And he had to stop mid sentence because as he turned, he saw we were, had our jerseys on, <laughs> and uh, and he just stopped mid sentence and started laughing. But hmm. the um, the whole time he, you know. He, on board he was recognizing us and then <laughs> i was talking about him and he was right behind me on the escalator so apparently yeah, we're, we're, we're on the escalator leaving the airport and then we hear let's go rangers and we turn around oh and there you go it's both pilots from our plane <laughs> awesome one way one was a caps fan and one was a devil's fan so yeah oh, okay. uh, i i just want to say i do not think you know christine and i have started this podcast and we obviously like you know we're excited about hockey i don't think we've even had to really pitch it i think that okay. for for our, the group of people that we know i think they just saw how much we were into it so mm -hmm. i think they were like oh i'll check out this thing yeah. and then i think by default they because hockey is super interesting especially when people go when they watch a playoff game first of all i mean playoffs are different as yeah, you know yeah. yeah completely different like different level of excitement so the second they would watch like one of the games i think they would be hooked and especially our friends who got to go to a game like literally for the first time if they experience yeah. going to a game live they were for like sure. this is amazing like what a great yeah. experience so i don't even think we've had to pitch it that much other than just okay keep consistent yeah. through the ups and the downs and, yeah, yeah, yeah. and there's been a lot of there's been a lot of ups for us and there's been a lot of downs and it's it's yeah. really been a mix it's it's been it's been fun and i mean we've we've been to you know to games a lot of with a lot of people with their first which is really fun mm. and um and then in, in just talking with people uh either at work or even at work so i have my boss lives in toronto and she's not really into hockey uh and so hmm. but she knows Is i talk allowed? about it you know <laughs> and 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 so i relate a lot of things between my work and doing the podcast and my love for you know sports and i also do i think i'm a president of a business resource group that you know we have a lot of those in our job where 
you know, we promote, um, you know, different areas, uh, you know, to, to help promote within the company, like, uh, LGBTQ, uh, a Asian American and, you know, um, and Indian cultures and military strong. I mean, just all these different business resource groups that kind of bring it up within the company to celebrate things. So I intertwine all of this within work. So there's a lot of crossover and people get excited again, kind of what Liz is saying. Um, and since we've been doing this and we've been learning, so we share that too. So I could grab somebody, a woman, especially men too, um, into the hockey kind of world just by saying how cute they are, you know? Uh, and then when they start seeing pictures, they're like, well, this might be a good sport, you know, to, yeah. to take a look at. And then, you know, again, the speed and the excitement of it all, when they start to kind of get to know, a lot of people like it, but I think what throws them off is they just don't know the rules or they don't sure. know things about it. So we've tried to do that with certain episodes too. My son, if you see my son comes on and, you know, and likes to help explain things, he's grown up playing hockey his whole life yeah. and, you know, and rooting for teams. He's a big Kings fan. So um, that, uh, and then we've just had a couple more, women I've seen on like the, the site that, that Liz and I met called ladies of the Rangers, or they have ladies of the NHL kind of say, I really like it. I just don't know a lot of the rules for mm. things. So yeah. it gives us an opportunity to kind of do a little research and kind of get that on our podcast to kind of talk about it more so that people can have a better understanding of it when they watch it. Cause have you ever been to a game when you got the person behind you <clears throat> and they, they act like they know everything. <laughs> they don't. And they, yeah, and they are explaining. Yeah. They're explaining like the rules completely wrong. Yeah. <laughs> like the guy on a date, you know, and he's like, oh, yeah, yeah. That's, and he's. I'm like, no, <laughs> it's wrong. <Yeah. laughs> so my kids have grown up. I mean, I still remember when the Ducks were fairly new, and we went to the Ducks game, and again, my kids played hockey. So when they would shoot the puck at the net, and it would be ten feet off, the whole crowd would be just like. Oh, you know, they was, and my kids were just looking around like that wasn't even close. Like, I don't know what they're talking about. So, oh, really? That's interesting. Yeah, it was like in those first kind of formative yeah. years. And oh, so, oh, and learning, you got a lot yeah. Of, yeah, now you got a lot of these people that, you know, Vegas is still new. We're going to have a new team in Utah with a new yeah. crowd, you know, and these, these are people that are going to become, um, you know, capitalists pretty much because they're going to buy the seats and sell them because they know it's in demand, but, but yep. they're going to become fans too. You know, so, uh, so it's, it's good just trying to educate people. You find if you just kind of talk about it a little bit, it, it'll pique their interest. And I don't think anyone hasn't liked it. Yeah. Well, we, before, like before we wrap up, Colin, do you have any, any predictions of how the rest of the finals are going to go for, oh, uh, for your Oilers? Predictions. Uh, I know, what did the Corgi say? I think the Corgi the had. At least six. I think the Corgi, I thought the Corgi had the Oilers actually. So did the Oilers have the Oilers? Yeah. I think so. I'll have to find it. Mayor. That corgi is so wrong, though. I don't think we can trust that corgi. I've learned that. I've learned that after many years. Uh, <laughs> corgi stupid today. corgi. Okay. I'm, gonna, I'm gonna go with my heart, but probably not my head here, and just say, like everyone wants the Oilers in six. That way, they get to win it on home ice. Home. So, yeah. or can we can we just win forum games around against the Panthers? Can't lose any, can't lose any from this Why not? Time. Why not? So, let's let's do it. More of the question is, so let's take tomorrow night. Um, do you think, uh, what do you think, do you think he's gonna, they're going to do anything different? I mean, hopefully I want to see them take shots. I've been mesmerized by the lack of shots that this team has gone through. I am, and, I am, um, yeah, it's so sorry. Go. Yeah, sorry, so did, did, what did, are your did, thoughts did, about, let's just take one game at a time, yeah. I think I think the last game where on the power play where every time McDavid meant to make a pass, it hit Ekbed like like someone's stick. I think I think the only thing they have to change is that instead of doing that extra little cute pass, just fire it. Fire this it. This sounds very familiar. Just yeah, right? Say. Just, yeah, <laughs> right? Sounds... You, you would think and that, that, that's the, that's the you one thing I would think they would watch the other games, right? Same team. I'm learn. telling you, they're the same right? team. They're, just... all, they're all being secretly <laughs> coached by Peter Laviolette. Yeah, right. Like that, first, just... that first line needs to step up. Stop doing cross-size passes. Yeah. Just shoot. Just shoot. It's, it's one, of my, one of my favorite stupid hockey things is like, is like when things aren't going well, instead of injecting more skill, just like, no, use less skill. Just take it back and shoot it forward. <laughs> shoot it forward. True. Pucks in deep. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah. I think that's I think that's the only thing they'll they'll do different. I mean, the first game they had all the shots in the world. 
Um, yeah, but they they're all they're all this high off the ice, and you're not going to score in Bobrovsky, um, except yeah. for the one goal. But I think that's the only thing. I think just more get just take it back to Bouchard, let him rip it, and try to get it up people. high. That's the only thing you can do. Otherwise, you're not going to get to get too far. So here's hoping. Should be fun either way. Yeah, I think it's going to. You know, they, they've. It's got to be a close game. You guys have home ice advantage now for the yep. next two day, you know, two games, four days, you know, now like yep. tomorrow and through Saturday. And so, uh, yeah, I mean, the goalies are doing their job well. Um, mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, and hopefully you guys maintain your composure as much as I like to see crazy fights. I don't like seeing them in the playoffs. I like it when it's like yeah. perfect hockey, you know, the, the, and yeah. Playoff fights, they're, they're so nerve wracking because everyone's like, they simultaneously want to murder each other and not want to take a penalty at the same time, which really doesn't uh, well, yeah. amount to much. Well, just think of that. So last year, if you if you recall, if you watched it last year when when the Panthers played against the Knights, you know, the other things the Panthers have had Gudas, who was just a freaking monster, you know, and he's on the Ducks now and he's a fan favorite, but he was just all over that. He was so thuggy. Uh, but what what did it for the the golden knights was that they maintained their composure on every play every second of the game and played in my opinion a near perfect game each time to win and i think what i'm seeing is that the panthers learn from that yeah. and so um and that's kind of where they're at and they're you know i think they are re-watching these videos and they're kind of seeing so uh i hope to see that there's a good change to make it a better game and to kind of you know now i just want the seven games because i'm already sad that we have two days of no hockey and nothing yeah. I'm, like, I'm like i thought there was a game today i'm like i i was gonna get ready to get my popcorn and my chicken yeah. stuff and my little nashi's dinner stuff and i'm like no it's tomorrow dang it yeah. so um now you know I want it to last as long as possible now, just for my own personal self. Cause then, then it's, then I'm kind of in a depressed, boring mode. I don't know what to do. Yeah. You know? Then we're just killing, killing time till October. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I usually when the season in like this, well, because and usually the others aren't this far, but usually when hockey season ends, like, uh, I get to like this seat and I, I have like three weeks. I'm just like, Oh, I'm just kind of glad that's over. I needed a break. And then by the time August comes around, it's like, when's hockey starting again? Yeah. Like what's, uh, like base, yeah. Baseball yeah. is not holding my interest. Oh, but I know, I know. Who's your Who's Perfect. your baseball team? Uh it's it's the Blue Jays, right? They're 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 Canada's team. They have the Maple Leaf on the logo. Although, ge- like geographically, Seattle's the closest team to to where I live. So, I mean, uh, I'll listen to them on the radio a little bit. So, I think I feel like I've, I've re- uh, so Blue Jays, but also like if the Mariners won, I'd be you know, pretty happy. So, and also so Colorado York, for some weird reason. So New York teams in general, have been disappointments for many fans. Yeah. So I've had a comparison, you know, of, of sympathy, you know, for, for me and the Rangers with, you know, with someone who's a Mets or, you know, Yankees fan or, you know, so yeah, you know, like New York, we're, we're tough for a reason, you know? So, um, and that's been, uh, been the fun part. And as we're expanding kind of, you know, our knowledge of, you know, of teams again, you know, we started off as this with this near Ranger vibe, uh, but we're branching out because you also have this, this great women's league too, that, yeah. um, you know, has formed and, you know, has completed their first year. So their second year is going to be most exciting. And, you know, you've got three Canadian teams up there as well. Mm-hmm. So, so that's, uh, that, I think that adds a little bit more excitement. You, you have to, I want you to try, you got to try to hit up those, those guys, you know, um, and one of those games at some point, I think um, next year yeah. I might even travel with my son. I know my son wants to hit some of these women's games. So maybe we'll try to make it um, a thing. I was, I was having this conversation yesterday. We were actually talking about the PWHL. I'm stoked for the logos, by the way. Like I can't, I can't believe they did. They did as well as they did. Nobody had a logo, knew had a team name. So like when the, when the new jerseys or if they're doing jerseys or logos and team names drop, I can't wait, but it's like, I feel like you could, you could put, like I, I'm not sure what the reception was in this in in the states. You could probably have 15 PWHL teams in Canada, easy. You could put them in all oh, the yeah. NHL cities. You could put them in. You could put them in Halifax. You could put one in Saskatoon. You could like like blanket this country in P- oh, yeah. PWHL, and they would be 
they would all do gangbusters. Yeah, there so, was a, one of the one of the new recruits is a doctor and has put her career on hold to play hockey. She's like, I only have a few years of opportunity to play hockey. I can amazing. be a doctor, a doctor forever. forever. Yeah, who so, cares? You know, but it was good to be a doctor on the team. I put doctor on my on the back of my jersey for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that'll be exciting because, and I, you know, everything, what we've learned is everything that they've done from their logo uh, is so symbolic of everything mm -hmm. to their yeah. trophy. Uh, and, you know, and we'll, I know we'll kind of investigate and talk a little bit more about that, you know, on it's maybe a dedicated episode to that because they just had their draft and, mm -hmm. Uh, you know, and they're in the amount of people that they're picking up and they're, they're you're right. There's, there's plenty of women that are coming out and they're drafting more people into these teams and it's getting a lot of good reception around. So it'd be nice to see that expand. So I'm curious to see the names. Yeah. That'll be, the, that's the most exciting thing yeah. that we're waiting to see to come out, but I have a feeling it's going to be, since everything has been so symbolic, they, yeah. um, their, their first round of names were some went so well, some not. So I, I, it's a, it'll be exciting to see because you know there gets like a lot of efforts going to be put into that, and, and they're yeah. going to be pretty amazing. Yeah. So yeah. what do you it? think? What do you think New York's going to be called? They guess? were supposed to be called the Sound. Um, oh. I think they were supposed to be called the Sound, and that was like based on I guess like the the area that they were playing in. But I guess they've canned hmm. that idea. Okay. So I don't know what they're going to be now. Hmm. Um, it'll be interesting. Hmm. Yeah, we have. Have no idea. They've had a Riveters team. They have had some kind of other, and they the don't even play in New York, so <laughs> it's a weird thing. <laughs> the Cry Benajeds. That's what I'm hoping Aww. that it's going to be. The New York Cry Benajeds. Uh, well, on that on that note, everybody, um, please check out Colin's Instagram because it is truly fantastic, and that is Colin McIntyre draws. Um, he is really awesome. Or get in touch with his podcast, and we will happily uh, share his info with you. Colin, thank you so much for joining us. We are super excited for the Oilers and the Panthers. That's fine. Whatever. Um, and continue watching oh, this space me, because right? we will be, we'll be bringing you guys uh, more updates, uh, more fun interviews, uh, and just a lot more on the off season. Thanks. Uh, thanks for having me, Liz and Christine. You guys are doing awesome. You guys are the ambassadors. Keep up the great <laughs> work. You guys <laughs> should, you. I'm not, if you, have you, I like, uh, do, do YouTube videos where you guys explain the rules for, for other fans, right? So, I mean, yeah, you guys are awesome. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, and so let, let's, man. let's, next year, I think we, let's year, let's have the final. I think, no disrespect to Florida, we all wanted Rangers Oilers. Yes. Let's see, <laughs> let's see if the two teams can exist on the ice. Although, at the you same know, we would have been your Test easy. Liz's easy. conspiracy easy. theory. I, exactly. Or does the world explode if that happens? Yeah. Who and knows? Matter matter. There's only one way to find out. Yeah. <laughs> I know. On to 2025. Rangers Oilers 2025. There we go. Thanks, everybody. Okay. Thanks, guys. Have a great night. Thank you. And I think, hang on.